Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're here for the first time, thank you. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and check out my other videos. If you're here for a second or third or fourth painting, thank you so much for coming back and I look forward to seeing what you guys paint. So today's video is perfect for my first time painters. These are great videos to just kind of get you comfortable with the brush, comfortable with mixing your paint and the kind of the way these are set up, you're gonna do kind of a crazy abstract background. You are welcome to switch out colors if you want. Um, and then we'll use black paint and put a silhouette design on there. Um, and that kind of solidifies your composition. So again, this is excellent practice just to get comfortable with the process of painting and perfect for my first time and beginner painters. If you wanna do a different silhouette design, um, just Google uh, the subject matter and silhouette of what do you want to do and feel free to switch it up and make the painting your own. Use this as just kind of a, a guideline, a step-by-step -step of what to do. Um, with that being said, in the description box below you're going to see a link to a supply kit and in that supply kit is everything that you need to grab um, materials, paints, brushes, canvas for this particular painting. So check out the supply kit, grab the materials that you need, and then pick up the video again. With practice, you get better and more comfortable. So keep on finding ways to have a creative outlet on a monthly basis. Your future self will be very grateful that you did. So uh, I think it's enough talking. Let's go ahead and get started painting. Right, guys another fun sunset silhouette painting today perfect for my first time painters so grab all your supplies and we are keeping with primary colors today our red yellow and blue um, and as always make sure you take your progress photos now we're gonna start off with a large flat brush and we're gonna start with our light colors so we're gonna start with light yellow so that is white plus yellow and we're going to kind of fill the bottom portion of the painting and we're going to work our way to get a little darker with blue on the top. So if you are using student grade paint, I do recommend that you apply this a little bit thicker just so your blending will be a little bit easier. Um, and here you can see where I'm kind of using the full width of the canvas for my brush strokes and then now adding that direct yellow, so a little bit darker. We're going to add a touch of red to this yellow and white mixture in a moment. But whatever color you like, if you want more of one color than what I use, feel free to make this what you want. So here you can see that I added a little bit of red and a little bit of red goes a long way. And I use the white yellow with a touch of red. And yours may be a little more intense pink than mine, or it may even be a um, different shade altogether. But again, just whatever you feel like, um, what colors you want in your background, go with that. And here you can see where I am overlapping the yellow and blending them together. This is what we call wet on wet blending. So if you apply your paint a little bit thicker, this makes it easier to do that blending. And here you can see where I added more red going a little bit darker, um, kind of closer to a medium pink. Again, your call, uh, the shade of pink or even the shade of yellows and oranges that you want on your painting. Now, if you're holding your breath, take a deep breath and relax. You're doing a great job. Now we're going to switch over to blue and you do want to clean that brush really good. You don't want to bring any of the other colors uh, to contaminate the blue mixture. And again, you're going to start with white, add a little bit of blue to make a light blue. And you're going to fill the whole remaining space. And you'll notice that when I do come close to the pink, um, I'm a little bit more controlled, um, a little bit more aware of my brush strokes as it overlaps because you can still do the same blending. And I am using that light pressure uh, right here on this area where both the colors are overlapping. So now we're gonna grab more of that direct blue, kind of a medium blue. And here you can see where I just slapped it on there. And then we're gonna go back and with light pressure just go over the top. This is a bit more obvious um, example of the wet on wet blending. And again, one of the more fun parts of the painting uh, process. 
So here you're going to see where I kind of go through with a little bit more of the blue. I did go back and grab more of the red, kind of placing it on top of both of these colors and still with that light pressure of my brush going right on top of them and kind of creating this really pretty um, lavender color between the two. And in a moment, I will go down um, and grab the yellow and kind of do the same thing. So you want to do everything that you want to your background right now uh, while your paint is wet, and then I recommend letting it dry completely before you move into your silhouette design. So again here, just putting the yellow, if you want to make that orange again, um, go for it. Anything that you want to your background, do it now. So fully let your background dry, and then we're going to do our silhouette design with black paint. And we're going to start off putting the ground on there, and then literally our cactus are going to be the closest to doing a stick figure um, as I've probably ever taught in a long time. So um, this is a really fun uh, painting to do for a first time painter. And it's nice to kind of have that background and then the solid design uh, for the black silhouette. And again, full permission, you can change your uh, the shape of your background um, or your land to anything that you like. All right, for that cactus, I like to start with the center, just kind of like a tree, get that base center of this big saguaro cactus on there, and then we'll give it arms. And you can see that I am using the medium flat brush and kind of the full width of the brush. If you're finding that this is too much, feel free to switch over to the small pointy brush and you will see me use that um, a little bit later on for the other cactus or cacti. Um, and again, you can reference other pictures. The saguaros come in so many different shapes with all these crazy weird arms and different directions that they'll grow. Um, so full permission to make this your own. Now, as you're working with this, as you get into smaller spaces, um, especially when I move over to the pointy brush, you want to play with your pressure. Light pressure is going to create a bit of a skinnier line. More pressure is going to create a wider line. So as you're getting comfortable with this, just play with your pressure. And if you have a variety of thick and thin lines, that's okay. That's just where you're painting for today. And adding some of that grass. Um, and again, it's just using that light pressure and a little flick of the wrist um, or a little flick of the brush stroke. And like I said, the cactus do grow in different directions and look kind of weird sometimes, so you really can't mess up a cactus. Again, remember to breathe. If you're finding that your brush is shaky, that means you're holding your breath. So exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas. And you're doing a great job. I'm really proud of you for painting at home. This gets easier with more and more practice. So don't wait too long to do your next painting. Alright, anything, as many cacti as you want, if you want birds in the sky. So thanks so much you guys, really appreciate you hanging out with me. Until next time, cheers. Hey guys, I hope your paintings turned out really nice and I hope you feel a little more relaxed now at the end of painting compared to when you started. I'm really, really, really proud of you for painting at home. So. Uh, good job. Don't wait too long to do another painting and just kind of hone in the skills that you learned today. It will be more comfortable um, the next time that you go to paint. As you're uploading your pictures to social media, please tag me in those photos, paint with lovejoy, or email them to me, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. Um, I'm a fully solo production here, so seeing your feedback, hearing your comments, um, really kind of gives me motivation to keep making these videos and it is growing really, really nicely. Um, when you are ready, I do have something that you can kind of uh, level up to. So I want you to check out my main website, paintwithlovejoy.com and I feature my Paint Your Pet class and it is geared towards first time and beginner painters. So check that out when you're ready to kind of take the next level of painting at home. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, things that you would like me to paint in the future, please leave a comment below. I do my best to respond to all of those pretty quickly. And like I said earlier, your feedback is definitely keeping me uh, going and keeping me make more videos. So it is your support that's making this happen. Um, so yeah, 
Thanks again for taking time out of your day to paint with me. I'm honored, truly grateful that uh, you're finding a lot of help in these videos and enjoying the process of painting. So until next time, cheers.